Hi friends, uh, in this lecture we will uh, revise the external and middle ear. Uh, the ear as you know is the organ of hearing as well as the equilibrium. Okay, the ear consists of three parts, the external ear, middle ear as well as the internal ear. So here in this picture you can appreciate this is the external ear made up of the, the pinna as well as the external costumiatus, then this is the middle ear and this is the, uh, the internal ear. Okay, external ear uh, will be collecting as well as conduction of the waves from the air to the tympanic membrane, okay, which helps in the uh, vibration of all the audible frequencies. Okay, uh, the external ear develops from the last part from the uh, ectoramorphous brachial cleft and the pinna uh, is the mostly a mammalian feature. Okay, uh, the external ear consists of two parts, the auricle as well as the uh, the uh, external acoustic meatus. This is the auricle or also called as the pinna and here deep inside within the, uh, the external acoustic meatus. So the pinna has the tragus, the anterior tragus, this is the lobule, this is the helix and this is the anti-helix, scaphoid uh, fossa and on the helix you can see a tubercle called the Dobbins tubercle, then this is a triangular fossa, kumba as well as this is the conca. Okay. Uh, Going to the auricle, uh, it is trumpet like and it is uh, mainly uh, for the collection of the sound waves and it is uh, a single piece of yellow elastic cartilage. That's why you can twist and turn because it is made up of elastic cartilage except the lower part, the lobule. You have seen the lobule here. So this is the lobule, okay, which is made up of mainly the uh, fiber by fatty tissue. Okay. And there are muscles of the auricle, uh, there are two sets which are mainly a vestigial in case of human beings, the extrinsic as well as the intrinsic. We are not going to detail in this. Okay. Uh, the blood supply is mainly by the posterior auricular as well as the superficial temporal arteries. The lymphatic drainage is into the pre-auricular group of lymph nodes which are present here, the post-auricular group of lymph nodes and then the, from there to the superficial cervical group of lymph nodes. The auricle develops from the fusion of the uh, six uh, mesodermal hillocks which are around the first brachial cleft. Okay. The nerve supply is by the auriculotemporal branch of the uh, mandibular nerve. This part will be uh, supplied by auriculotemporal branch. Then this part will be sub supplied by the lesser occipital nerve and the lowermost part will be the greater auricular nerve. Okay, here they, they have shown the same thing. Okay, coming to the external acoustic meatus, uh, it extends from the bottom of the concha to the, the tympanic membrane. It is almost 2.4 uh, centimeters or 24 millimeters and it is S-shaped, it is not straight as seen in this picture. So this is the external acoustic meatus, uh, it is S-shaped. Okay, for the simplification, they have shown straight here. Uh, it has pass externa, pass intermedia, and the pass interna. Uh, the pass externa is the outermost, uh, uh, outer uh, external one third. The pass intermedia is the middle one third, and the the internal will be the pass uh, interna. So, if you want to see the uh, into the external acoustic meatus from there into the the tympanic membrane, you have to pull the ear upwards, backwards, and laterally because of the uh, S-shaped curve. Okay. The uh, subdivisions, the lateral one third is cartilaginous, that is the pass externa, and it is 8 millimeters. The medial two thirds will be bony, okay, the pass intermedia as well as the pass interna. And the bony part is the narrowest compared to the, the cartilage part. Here you can see the cartilage part, lateral one third, middle one third, as well as the posterior one third will be bony, made up of bone, okay. Uh, it is the canal is oval in uh, uh, cross section and it presents two constrictions. One is at the junction of the bony and the cartilage part, that is the lateral one third and medial two thirds. And the second part is called as the where it is isthmus, the more narrowest part where where it is called isthmus, and it is almost two centimeters deep out of the 2.4 centimeters of the external acoustic meatus. Lining, uh, it is lined by the skin and it is directly adherent to the uh, the uh, to the uh, the cartilage of the bone so that's why whenever there is even small infection or accumulation of pus then it leads to uh, severe pain because it is directly adherent to the cartilage of the bone okay and there are uh, uh, there are glands there which are, will be secreting the ear wax okay uh, the blood supply uh, to the outer part will be by the superficial temporal artery, posterior auricular artery as well as to the inner part by the maxillary artery. Uh, Pre-auricular and post-auricular as well as the cervical group of lymph nodes. Another supply, anterior half by the auricular temporal nerve, posterior half by the auricular branch of the vagus. Okay. Uh, going to the applied aspects. 
the inflammation as i said will be painful because it is directly adherent to the cartilage of the bone the second thing is the toothache whenever there is uh, toothache then it will be uh, especially from the lower jaw or from the cancer of the tongue it will be referred to the uh, to the uh, external ear as well uh, because uh, the same nerve which is uh, supplying uh, the jaw will be supplying as well the tongue will be supplying the uh, the uh, the ear also that is the uh, the trigeminal nerve mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve the third is the ear wax which if it is collected then it can be a syringe and the with the liquid water and can be drained but it sometimes it can lead to cardiac inhibition and that because of the irritation of the auricular branch of the vagus nerve which might lead to sometimes to death coming to the tympanic membrane it is a, a oval uh, membrane and it is thin semi transparent pearly gray and it is trilaminar it is uh, it has three layers trilaminar and which separates the tympanic cavity external ear from the middle ear okay uh, the size maximum size is 9 to 10 mm and the minimum is 8 to 9 mm Uh, uh, coming to the, uh, it has a, a, a malleola fold which divides the tympanic membrane into two parts. They pass flaccid and pass tensor. If you can see here, this is the the malleola fold, uh, which is the anterior malleola fold and the posterior malleola fold, which divide the whole tympanic membrane into upper part called as the pass flaccida, and this is called as the pass tensor. Okay. The surface of the membrane, it has an outer and inner surface. The inner surface is convex and gives attachment to the handle of the malleus as you have seen so this is the handle of the malleus okay this is one of the ossicle of the middle ear so the handle of the malleus will be present here uh, attached to the uh, tympanic membrane up, coming up to the center and the most bent part that will be called as the umbo okay and this will be pulling the tympanic membrane and it will be keep it taut and then uh, 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 as well as uh, stiff okay the structure of the membranes from outside to in, uh, inside the outermost i said it is trilaminar so the outer layer is by the the cuticular layer that is the skin that is the uh, hairless keratinized stratified squamous epithelium the middle layer will be mainly fibrous in nature uh, by the outer radiating and inner circular fibers which keep the pass uh, tensor uh, solid but the pass flaccida it doesn't have the this uh, fibrous layer but it is collection of the uh, loose connective tissue so that's why it is lax which is at the top pass flaccida okay then the innermost layer will be by the mucous membrane of the uh, the middle layer that is the simple ciliated column uh, ciliated uh, low columnar or squamous epithelium okay uh, uh, coming to recesses there are small spaces called as recesses anterior posterior as well as the uh, pusax recess okay so this is the the tympanic membrane okay seen from inside okay coming to the arterial supply uh, the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery will be supplying the cuticular part the stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular and anterior tympanic branch of the maxillary artery will be supplying the mucous layer and the venous uh, drainage will be into the external jugular and from there to the transverse sinus as well as the uh, pterygoid venous plexus okay coming to the nerve supply the cuticular layer that is the outer layer will be supplied by the auricular temporal uh, nerve upper and anterior part and the uh, the uh, lower and posterior part will be supplied by the auricular branch of the vagus nerve okay and the mucous part will be supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve to the tympanic plexus okay so this is the tympanic plexus and this is the uh, tympanic nerve coming from the glossopharyngeal nerve and this is the plexus which is formed which is supplying the mucal part okay this seen from the the middle ear so you can see this appreciated so coming to the uh, will not call, talk about the development uh, just i will briefly say that the three layers are formed by the three different uh, parts of the embryonic layer Ec ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm outer layer will be formed by the cuticular layer the intermediate form from the mesoderm and the inner layer from the endoderm so all the three germ layers are there coming to the applied aspects meningotomy it is the surgery done on the the tympanic membrane but you should be careful because cordo tympanic nerve will be passing above uh, uh, between on the uh, the malla fold okay and whenever the light is uh, uh, put on the tympanic membrane a part is blown that is called as the cone of light 